Hey guys. Well, I messed it up. I flooded the kitchen. Although, in my defense, it wasn't my fault, and I'll explain why. Um, you can see all the stuff from under the kitchen, uh, under the kitchen cabinet, on sink cabinet, is on top of the countertops. I got a fan going here just to dry everything out. But let me show you why things got so bad. The water got all the way down over here. It got kind of where I'm standing right now. So it went a good 8, 10 feet wherever gravity took it. All right, I'm going freehand here, so I apologize if things are a little bumpy, but this is what happened. I put this frozen chicken in the sink and filled it up with water to defrost it. I was gonna make soup tonight. And uh, I left the water running here, walked away, and made a mental note to myself that if this water gets too high, it would overflow into this basin, right? Logical, but unfortunately my logic was somewhat flawed, and here's why. I didn't realize that this seal between the granite and the sink had been compromised. So what I'm doing, hopefully you can see that, I'm pushing down, you see the gap that forms and the weight of the water leaked out between the sink and the granite. So this sink is now loose everywhere. And if I push down there, you see things happen over there too. So, the caulk that's holding the sink in, I, I know, because I watched the granite guys install it. I was kind of mad at them when they did it because they used that Alex Plus stuff, which is really just caulk designed for door trim and such. Um, it's the Alex Plus. It's like the cheapest stuff possible, obviously. Anybody, time, any, anytime anybody does work for you, they're going to be using the cheapest materials possible, right? So I gave them a hard time, but the sink was already installed. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull the sink out. We're going to clean up the surface of the granite underneath. We're going to clean the surface of the sink, because you can probably tell the caulk was kind of disgusting anyway. And we're going to install the proper caulk, which is going to be a silicone-based caulk. That hopefully will be a permanent repair. Okay, it's the next day and the Amazon fairies have arrived and brought me some goodies here to fix this sink. So this is the, uh, the silicone I'm going to be using to seal between the sink and the countertop. And uh, it's going to act as an adhesive as well. Now, I did some research online. Apparently, what I experienced here is a pretty common problem. They actually make aftermarket kits to reinforce the sink so this failure doesn't occur again. So I ordered one such kit here. I'll give you guys a link to all this stuff on Amazon in the description. It's a universal stainless uh, strap kit. So it goes underneath the sink. I don't know if you can see this here. So we have a uh, a, double ba a double basin with offset drains, so it's going to strap from one side to the other. And it's got stainless steel, or, I'm sorry, steel wire to hold it up. So hopefully that should prevent any sort of failure in the future. So this should be a permanent fix. So what I've done so far is, and I got all the parts, got some tools in here. I also pre-cut some wood blocking, you can see there, just to hold the sink up when I unscrew it. And also that's going to help hold the sink in place um, once we put the caulk in there and as we're setting that brace. So recommend you doing that. So I think the rest of this video, I'm probably going to have to shoot with the GoPro on my back. So I apologize in advance for the audio quality, but I don't see any way around it. There's no way I'm going to get this camera and tripod in there. So let's switch over. I lied. There are some things we can do outside here without getting on our backs. Most important of which is disconnecting the plumbing. So let's get these bracing out of the way. <clears throat> oh, man, I'm getting too old for this. So let's get our catch base in there. Let's get you guys situated where I can work and you can see. Turn the water off to everything. Now let's undo our trap here. Sorry, the dogs in the back are licking some dishes. Just finished dinner. So all this is gonna have to come apart. Thankfully it's pretty easy to put back together. 
see how disgusting this trap is. No, it's not that bad. Seen worse. Also shut off our dishwasher so no one thinks to run the dishes. All right, uh, let's undo our disposal connection here. Undo this connection here. T-fitting. And I think, I'm trying to remember how this goes in here. There's, yeah, there's a screw there. Let's get our screwdriver. This is a super cool disposal, by the way. It's a waste king. This thing's a tank. If anybody ever needs a disposal, highly recommend it. So I'm just unscrewing the fastener in here that's holding it in place. The tube, or the pipe that's the drain for the disposal. Yeah, there's one on the other side. Lovely. Let me work on that. Okay, got that out. Now we're going to take off our disposal connection here. It's for the dishwasher. Like so. Drain everything out. Now we can unplug our disposal and yank that out. So when I installed this kitchen about 10 years ago I installed a, a quad outlet behind the disposal hopefully you guys can see that this way you don't have to like hard wire anything you just install plugs and just makes things a lot easier now let's see if I can remember how this thing comes out I want to say this yeah here we go I think it just comes out like this right So there's a little collet up top that you got to turn to unlock the disposal. So let me work on that. Okay, we got all the plumbing out. Now I think it's time to put our temporary bracing back in. Again, I just don't want this sink coming crashing down on me. And there should be a couple of clips on the corners that actually hold the sink up. And these look like, they look like Phillips screws. It's hard to tell or because this is where we switched to the GoPro. Or maybe, maybe we don't. You guys just watch me make a fool of myself from out here. That's always fun, right? I took the cabinet doors off because I knew that was going to become a problem. So I'm just going to go in here on my back. Sorry, you guys can't see this, but actually, let me uh, let me bring you under here real quick. Let's get take a peek. Here goes nothing. This should show you how much I really don't want to use my GoPro. So there's a clip right there. There's one a little bit further back. Hopefully, you guys can see that. And I believe there's two more on that side of the sink. There's probably one there. Probably one in the back. There we go. So we gotta undo those. Now it doesn't look like these clips have failed. It just looks like the sealant has failed. So clips are doing their job, uh, but the sealant is letting water through. So that's really why we're doing this repair. So let me work on those and uh, pick it up once those are looser. Okay, I got the screws loosened on all four sides. Again, you don't have to take everything out. Just gotta move the clips out of the way so it's not holding the sink up. So right now I just got my wood bracing holding everything together. Oh, like so. So those clips should be hold, holding zero pounds of weight right now. So I'm gonna get my trusty helper and hopefully we're gonna yank this sink out. 
All right, I'm not going to film the actual sink removal because my wife is going to be my helper and she's in her underpants and understandably she doesn't want to be filmed. So pick it up once we move the wood blocking and the sink is out. You know what? I take it back. I'm going to try this myself. I have no idea how heavy this sink is. So I'm going to get under there. Uh, I'm going to remove the wood blocking. I'm not going to, I'm going to be off mic. So you guys won't be able to hear me except maybe hear me scream. Oh, maybe oh, the, mic, the mic reach. Yeah, maybe it'll reach. Let's try. What's the worst that could happen, right? This could be a really uncomfortable position. Oh. So let's see, we remove this. Is the sink moving? Really have no idea how heavy this thing is. It's a little scary. I mean, it's stainless steel, it could be heavy. nerve-wracking so let's just get under it like this this brace okay so this left side is like totally loose I think the back side's still holding it no clips back there though oh maybe the faucet's holding it yeah the faucet's holding it up so we're gonna have to loosen the faucet because there's a screw that anchors the faucet and that's holding the weight of the back of the sink. So I'll have to pause and regroup, loosen that. Pain in the neck job, geez. Okay, got the faucet loose as you can probably tell. It's at an angle there. Sink still isn't coming out. So I think the seal is actually still intact in the back so let's see if we can get a five and one and just pry on it a little bit it doesn't look it looks pretty busted i still have a wood up on this, this side supporting this side i actually also have the clips loose but still engaging the sink on this side just in case everything lets go it's pretty loose Just shoving a five and one between the the sink and the granite to break whatever seal is remaining. And I think we've done that. I'm gonna go all the way around just to be on the safe side. Okay, now I'm gonna put the two by four on this side and move it off of this side and do the same thing on the right side. Just make sure that seal is broken. Oh boy. Okay, so we got that. Let's do the same thing over here. Looks like it's pretty well separated. I think we're good now. We got a nice gap back in that corner there. Yuck. How heavy is this thing? That's got some gravity to it. All right, so I guess let's watch, let's let you guys watch me mess this up and drop the sink on my face, right? What fun would this video be without some carnage? Actually, it doesn't feel that heavy. You guys that have done this before are probably laughing at me, saying I'm a sissy. I really just don't want to drop this thing on my face. That's my big, big concern. Okay, let's try this again. I got my arm braced up against it here. Yeah, it's not that heavy. Not bad at all. There we go. Sink is loose. Oh man, it feels like it weighs maybe like five pounds. Don't I feel like an idiot? She's coming down. Trying not to break anything or bind on anything. I 
wonder if it's easier to take out the top. Let's just go with the flow. I probably should take it on all the plumbing lines. get out of the way oh boy. oh boy there's my sink boys and girls good look for it huh you think the wife would go for this probably not Me, Mr. Safety, my fire extinguisher mounts in the way. I think I gotta take the rest of the drain out, drain apart. Not enough room. Just gotta take that plastic stub off the bottom of the sink there. Okay, going freehand here. Sorry for the bounciness. So I think I mentioned I installed this kitchen about 10 years ago, but the granite guys installed this sink and they used the wrong sealant. They used the Alex Plus stuff. Yeah, I did tell you this. I'm repeating myself. But look at that. Look, it was probably never even sealed back here. It's perfectly clean and shiny. No sealant there at all, unless it's stuck to the underside of the counter. We'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, so we'll take this in the garage. We'll, we'll clean it up real good. All right, now I'm gonna take a, a five and one and just clean up under here. We'll get a razor blade too. Okay, so there was sealant there, just I guess it wasn't bonded. Weird. So yeah, look at what color that stuff turned. Gross. Okay, I got that pretty well cleaned up with a five and one. It really didn't bond all that well to the underside of the granite. Maybe that's uh, the root of this problem. Let's go out and tackle the sink. All right, got the sink on a little dolly here. Just so I can move it around easy. I'm gonna use a, a razor blade gasket scraper. At least to remove the heavy stuff. There's like nothing left. The seal is just like completely gone. Vaporized almost. Jeez. It's like a powder. Pretty gross, guys. Make sure you use silicone on your sinks. Another reason you use silicone is it's waterproof, right? And I don't think I mentioned this, but the granite guys actually did do something right. They installed a steel reinforcement beam on the front of the sink in its narrowest part. So like if people lean on it or whatever, it doesn't break. It's all well and good, but if water gets back there, that thing's gonna rust. What good is it if it rusts, right? So make sure you use the right products. All right, I'm gonna go at this for a little while longer. Don't need to bore you guys with this. Okay, I got the air compressor going in the background. Oh, there it just stopped. So now I'm gonna take some acetone and a rag. Just clean the this granite really well on the underside. I don't want any residue from that old caulk to be here. I'm just gonna clean this really well. Again, I'm just using acetone and a cloth rag. There might be a better cleaner for this, but this is what I'm using. If you wanna use something else, go ahead. I'm not telling you you have to use what I use, just showing you what I'm using. 
acetone is pretty good at dissolving old like acrylic caulks like this. This crappy Alex Plus is designed for trim. Not structural applications. Makes me mad. Mad 10 years ago, I'm even madder now. take a roll lock to the sink to the sink on a die grinder and we're going to acetone the sink too. what is a roll lock or is it a roto zip i can't remember that is great for removing junk like this gaskets old sealant without removing any of the base material Let's see how it works here <laughs> wonderfully probably see that this thing is scratching up the rim of the sink but we're no one's gonna see that so it doesn't really matter You don't need to see all this. And more acetone. Can't make this too clean. Just keep going at it. Okay, got everything all nice and cleaned up. As you can see, it's a really nice finish part in the cilantro in the sink. That was from dinner. So that edge is super clean, and I hit it with acetone twice. So now that's ready for caulk. So now it's time to install that, um, that kit to support the sink. All right, let's see what comes in this kit. They're pretty good reviews on Amazon. Some people seem to suggest it doesn't work too well with, or I guess it works better with sinks with one basin as opposed to two. And they said it works the worst in sinks with offset basins, unequal depth, which is exactly what I have. So this is going to be a worst case scenario. Let's look at the instructions. Or should we just throw these in the garbage? Okay. Let me read this for a moment and digest. Now the instructions for a a double sink it's offset like mine right here it should notice that it shows the cable going in front of the drains so i want to make sure that we clear those drains so let's go measure the sink let's pull a couple measurements so the center line of the drain is about 11 inches or so to the edge of the sink we want to make sure that that bracket is well away from that so let's do eight inches that puts us just in front of the drain on that side Let's check the other side. So we're about maybe 13 or so inches to the center line of the drain. And let's, and 10 inches puts us sufficiently in front of the drain. So let's do, we'll drill, we'll put that first bracket 
8 inches from the edge of the drain here, put a bracket 10 inches back there, and another one here. Now all the Amazon reviews universally said that the fasteners that come with this kit are pretty awful, so I'm not even going to bother with them, I'm not even going to waste my time. So I picked up some of these uh, stainless steel panhead screws that I've laying around. These, I got these from McMaster Car eons ago, so they're a little bit beefier. So let's measure on this side, eight inches from the opening. We'll make a mark with a silver Sharpie on the cabinet. This isn't exact science here, so you have to go, don't have to be perfect. So eight inches is about, not quite there, let's see. There, let's do 10 inches from here. other side. So I'm just measuring from the from the rim here. Actually let me go where you guys are and see better. And you might be able to see better too. So 10 inches is about there. And I think it's probably a good idea to mount your brackets as high as possible. We'll have more support on the sink that way. Let's go ahead and mount our bracket. Now that the sink is out, obviously, we have all the room in the world to do whatever we need to do mounting-wise. So, apologize in advance. I'm probably going to be in your line of sight here. I'm just going to put a one of these brackets here high up on that mark. I'm going to drill a little bit of a pilot hole. I'm going to go maybe a, an inch or two down from the top of the cabinet. Now if the sink was installed, there's no way you'd be able to do this. Not this high up, you'd be down a bit lower. Make a mark. Now I have a drawer base right next door, so i got to make sure that when I put these screws in, they don't go through and keep my drawer from operating, so I gotta test them afterwards. Looks like I have a couple different lengths here. They're pretty much the same as the screws that came with the kit. These screws do have a bit of a more aggressive thread to them, so hopefully they'll grip better. Did you guys see? Probably not, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can work without destroying your line of sight. That better? Maybe? still open and close. Look at that, it does. Perfect. So we got one bracket in. Give you guys a better view of what that looks like. Hopefully you can see right down in there. Right about there. So again, it'd be almost impossible to mount that bracket that high up with the sink installed. I'm maybe Inch and a half, two inches down from the top of the cabinet. Let's do the same thing on this side. Pilot holes may not be entirely necessary, but rarely hurts. Okay. 
there. That's one. take our last clip. We'll mount this as maybe as far forward as we can. Now we'll keep it. We want to keep it inside the basin, right? Yeah, so we'll go maybe just a couple inches over. I think we'll be fine. So again, on a double sink offset bowl, you get three clips, not four. I'm just going to eyeball it, stay a couple of just down from the top. And I am not drilling a pilot hole and it worked just fine, so I don't know why I bothered. Kind of silly. And no one will ever see these clips, so if they're not perfect, it doesn't really matter. Well, I guess you'll see them if you take the sink out. Okay. Now we got to uncoil some of this wire. This wire that comes with the kit. Zoom you back out a little bit. Recenter you. And to be clear, I have never done this before, so if I'm doing this wrong or one of you experts is out there, and you know exactly how to do this, and I'm doing it all wrong, go ahead and tell me. I don't care. I have thick skin. You won't offend me. So it looks like this kit's going to go like this, right? Something like that. I don't know. One step at a time. So what's the next step? I think we got to th thread some wire. These instructions are really hard to read. Looks like they're a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Uh. Oh, I get it. All right. So one of these things goes on like that. This thing's going to go like that, right? No, I had it backwards. Did I? Let me look at this for a second. All right, so I think the next step is to start threading the wire and tie a knot, right? So we gotta go up through one of the holes and bend into a V shape. Like that. I think what we'll do is we'll then bring it down the other hole. Yeah, maybe not. I think what we'll do is we'll just coil this together. I don't know how important it is to get this get a knot correct here. Probably not all that important. Okay. Let me get a pair of pliers and kind of 
cinch that together. Okay, I got a set of cheapo linesman pliers, my good ones are my electrical toolbox. Too lazy to get those out. Okay, hopefully this knot will be good enough. I'm not a, a wire knot tying expert here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I just put a bunch of twists on it and kind of rolled it on top of itself. Hopefully it doesn't matter a great deal. Let's bring it down a little bit. So now, I believe this side of the bracket goes in the, this is the bottom side of the sink on this side. And that brat, that wire is going to get, uh, I guess like that, because we don't want to touch the bottom of the sink. So we'll have to figure out where this is going to go. And then put a notch in that, right? Something like that. Probably, maybe. Hey, if you guys know, don't hold back on me here. Maybe something like that. Seems like you have enough adjustability room anyway. To mess up. The instructions pretty are awful. Are pretty awful though. Whew. I guess let's go with that, right? trying to think here how far do I want to go until we have the sink in here because it can't really drop this in although I guess we can disassemble it right yeah I don't see why not we can keep going we'll just have to assemble this I'll take it apart like this right all right let me get my thoughts together I'm just rambling here okay I've got it mocked about like that for now I'm gonna leave end of this wire untied uh, just so I can test fit the sink and make sure everything is going to work out okay before I cut the wire, tie it, and finalize everything. Okay, I got the sink in as a test fit. So I think everything's going to work out okay. That's held up with the wood braces right now, but you can see the, the strap system there. I think it's going to work. So let's take our blocking out we'll actually tie this up got that last cable wired up got all those wired up now I think it's time to lift the sink in for good so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it up prop it up with the, uh, the wood then support it using this new support system here this this hanger and then um, that'll give us a gap here between the sink and the countertop where we can apply our silicone. Okay, we got our sink held back in place with wood. Now let's get the hanger system engaged and then we'll let it droop in the air a couple inches down. Okay, now we got a floating sink here. Move around pretty freely. Maybe an inch or so gap between the, the sink and the granite. Now we're gonna run a nice big bead of silicone along the rim of the sink. Now, if you're not good with a caulk gun or with silicone in particular, you might want to put some blue tape around here because this stuff is not very forgiving. So I'm just going to hit this gap really good. Yeah, area where we ground or cleaned up really well. 
And this stuff is tenacious. So I'm just doing the whole perimeter. Now that we have our nice bead of silicone all the way around, I'm going to position this sink and I'm going to use the wood to secure it. Okay, we got the, the sink all caulked in. I have those four clips that the granite guys installed tightened and holding the sink in place while the caulk cures. I also have the wood below the sink. So I think we'll, you know what, let me, let me tighten the strap system a little bit just to kind of get everything set in place. All right. Tightening it's pretty easy. Just use a 7 16 wrench, a ratchet. And the, that's where it's tightened right there. Sorry guys, this video ended up being a little more complicated than I thought. Most of the installation videos you see online gloss over a lot of this stuff. Ah, and the sink's already installed in a lot of those videos too. Naturally, things are going to be a bit different when the sink is installed. I don't think you need to tighten this that much either. I have heard you have to be careful because you'll lift the granite on top off the countertop with this thing too, so you don't want to go too nuts. That's probably good. Actually, it's not really that tight. That's a lot tighter. All right, guys, I think we're good with that. Let's just make sure the sink didn't shift at all. Still looks perfect. A little dirty still, but a lot better than it was. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna call it a night. It's about, I don't know, probably about 10.30 at night. We'll let this silicone cure overnight, and then we'll start reassembling tomorrow. Okay, it's seven o'clock the next morning. Things are looking pretty good still. The caulk is set up nicely. I think they want, I want to say they wanted 24 hours before you could do, really do anything with it. So I'll probably leave it a bit longer before they inst I install the disposal or anything. I tightened that uh, device there. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. I can't remember what it's called. The harness. So now it's pretty taut, but not too taut, such as lifting up the counter. So now uh, all we got to do is really just reassemble the plumbing under the sink and the disposal. Did a little bit of cleaning up, vacuumed out the uh, all the old caulk cabinet here. Now it's time to put the garbage disposal back in. Ugh. So this waste king is actually pretty easy, yet difficult at the same time. Kind of have to lift it up and at the same time get this locking clip. And I'm leaning on the cord. Uh, I should probably fix that, huh? Oh, 
else. I've just got the pipe in my hair. So let's lift this bad boy up here. have to rotate this locking clip. Maybe. I don't remember it being that much of a pain in the neck. Let's try not doing this on my back. I hate working in small spaces like this. Might be helpful to put this thing up on blocks too. There it goes, okay. Now you just gotta take a screwdriver and force it the rest of the way until it locks. Just like that. So what's on there now? sink is still in good shape. Yep, no signs of movement or anything here. Now we can reassemble all the plumbing. And we seem to be missing some plumbing pieces. How'd that happen? Oh boy. I guess I better go find those, huh? Now I'm a hardcore dog lover, but I found the piece I was missing in the living room. My Labrador was chewing on it. Well, not chewing on it, he was licking it to death. I don't get them sometimes. It probably tastes disgusting, or I guess to him it probably tastes awesome. All right, so now we gotta sneak this piece in here. Like so. That goes on there like so. Just retightening all the plumbing pieces that I took off. And these normally fit back together just fine. Usually. Now comes the trap. I usually like to start it together like that. Start it there as well. You want to make sure you always have a trap. So you also make sure you have a downward slope, even a slight one from your disposer to the, to the trap. If you don't have a trap, or if your trap isn't properly constructed, it's going to smell pretty bloody awful under here, because you're going to be getting septic or sewer gases in here. That's no fun. So snug those fittings up nice and tight. Don't forget to reconnect your dishwasher. It's gonna come in from over here. Like so. And just tighten that clamp. I guess this is more than just a sink repair video, right? I'm kind of teaching you guys some general under sink repair procedures. I think we're good to turn the water back on now. So let's turn the water on to our dishwasher. And hot and cold to our sink. I like to have, when I plumb in dishwashers, I like to have the two separate valves that control the hot and cold on the sink and dishwasher respectively. So typically you have one pipe coming in 
and then it'll tee off. One piece will go to the dishwasher, one piece will go to the sink. I like to have two separate valves that control them only because if there's a problem with the dishwasher, I'd still like to have hot water in the sink. So not many houses are built that way, but it's just something I like to do for my own sanity. Let's give it a test. So first we gotta put some water in there. I'm not gonna fill the sink up too much. I'm just gonna run some hot water. Let's check for leaks. Oh, we got some leaks. That's why we test, folks. I think I forgot to tighten something. Probably that top piece up here. Yep, that was that piece, I think. I hope. Let's see if that's any better. Still got a little bit of leakage there. Let's check everything else before we tackle that. So we want to make sure this trap here fills up with water. You know, nothing leaks anywhere else except for, I guess, up there. So far, everything else seems okay. See if we can snug this down some more. We're missing a seal there, maybe? Yeah, I think we might be missing a seal. It's supposed to be like a plastic piece there. Let me go look in my bag of tricks and see if I have something. Probably do. Okay, so while I was doing that, I found the right piece, I think. One of these thingies. But while I was trying to take things apart to install it, broke the seal on my sink strainer basket. So now I gotta reseal that. Not for a dull moment, huh? So we just got that out. We'll deal with that. Okay, I got the strainer assembly out. This is a solid brass one. I recall is maybe $60, $70 as a color part. It's pretty expensive, so I'm gonna try and clean it up. I'm gonna stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner with a little bit of Dawn dish soap in hot water. We'll give it maybe half an hour or an hour and see what it looks like. It's kinda of dull right now. All right, she's going. Let's let her run for a while, we'll come back and check. Okay, while uh, the basket is cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner, let's see if we can get some of the caulk off of this surface here. There's probably silicone on here from 10 years ago. It's a shame it sealed didn't hold, but I guess 10 years is not, not bad, right? Good thing we bought plenty of silicone. <laughs> so just continue to work the perimeter of this, get all that silicone out. You might have plumber's putty here. Do not recommend using plumber's putty though. It will not last nearly as long, and you'll have, you'll find that the uh, the drain assembly on the bottom of this sink, like that nut, that holds it in place. It'll be all corroded and nasty, and that's just from water leaking past that plumber's putty. After a couple of years, plumber's the plumber's putty starts to dry out and uh, crack, and just lose becomes less effective. Let's put it that way. So it's good for a couple of years, but and you end up having an issue. And if you notice, this drain assembly in the bottom was super clean. There wasn't anything on there. So this, this caulk did its job. So everybody has different ways of doing things. I'm not saying my way's right or wrong. That's just how I do things. It's worked well for me. And again, it's lasted this long, so I can't complain. So I'll keep on working at that a little bit. Once you're satisfied, you get all the silicone off. Take some acetone and clean it really well. I want that ceiling surface to be spick and span. Scrub, 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 scrub. Okay, so it's a lot cleaner, but still not quite there. I'm gonna try a different type of cleaner instead of soapy water. I decided to switch over to Simple Green and that did a phenomenal job cleaning up the strainer. So I think we're gonna run with it now. I realized when I took this thing out, I had it installed incorrectly. 
it looks like I had just, you know, installed this thing here and just screwed it on. It didn't have these screws in the back. I don't know how that happened. Oversight on my part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of caulk, that same caulk that we used on the, uh, on the sink, on the rim where it meets the granite. I'm going to put a bead of caulk right in here. We're going to set the strainer basket in there and then we're going to um, tighten everything up from below. And the way this goes on is this piece here goes on like that, sandwiching the sink. So the sink is in that, that gap right there. And this thing screws on, I think maybe a, almost all the way except to like maybe a quarter inch. And these three screws, you tighten those to clamp it down. So I don't know why I didn't do that the first time. I must have been, must have had too many beers that day or something. It's a little tough. Let's see if we can do this on our back. All right, I'll fight with this on my time, not yours. There we go. Now it's going. It's a really nice strainer basket if anybody's ever in the market for one. Polar calls it the duo strainer. I'll see if I can leave a link to this thing in the description. You're supposed to tighten these things like all but maybe a quarter of an inch of the way. Tighten these screws against that steel plate that clamps it in place. Let me just check the orientation, make sure it looks okay. Almost okay. Not like that. Okay. Now these are not the factory screws. The factory screws probably disappeared 10 years ago, so I just used some stainless steel quarter 20 bolts. I'm going to tighten them up in a somewhat logical pattern. Maybe a little bit each time all the way around. Not 
out like that. All right, so now we'll let the caulk dry. That's what the final product looks like. We'll get the excess caulk out of there later. This project has ended up to be a lot more than I bargained for, huh? This is supposed to be a pretty simple thing. So, let's get that on there. I'm not going to be able to test the plumbing right away, just because, uh, let's see, let's get that on there first. I'll turn those into each other like that. So I'm going to just want to assemble this roughly, and then we'll test everything once the caulk dries. There we go. So this doesn't leak when I test it. I think we'll probably call this video a wrap. I don't think there's really anything else you guys can glean from this that you haven't already seen. But yeah, this stupid little project ended up being kind of a whole sink, rebuild, not rebuild, but a whole reconditioning of the kitchen sink. This is kind of where things ended up, sorry. So we got our strainer, hopefully properly, properly installed this time, coming down into a T. And this T is a, a special diverter in there for garbage disposal to our trap, and out the dra drain out the back. So that's it. So we'll, we'll leak check it in a little bit. Okay, it's been a couple hours. Now I'm gonna trim off this excess caulk here with a razor blade should come off without too much of a, a battle. Famous last words, right? Nothing about this job has been easy. <clears throat> Just how it goes sometimes. <clears throat> All right, let's see if it comes up. Sort of, maybe. coming out in pieces. <clears throat> anyway, it's a lot easier to do it this way than to, you know, mess with the, the silicone while it's wet. Okay, that's all trimmed. Came out pretty nice. Once every 10 years, why not? All right, so I'm gonna let that, since I disturbed that caulk, I'm gonna let that sit up for a while longer. Uh, we have some errands to run, so I think when we get back, we'll give this a water test. I have the dishwasher running now. Um, we already made sure that the the dish uh, the disposal side doesn't leak, so we're fine there. Okay, a couple hours have passed. Let's run some hot water through the side that we just uh, put the basket in. See what happens. Hopefully, no leaks. So far, so good. let that run for a while all right guys hope you found that video helpful uh, learning how to remount an undermount sink with uh, the Hercules universal sink harness um, I'll give you a link to this on Amazon in case you want to buy one also the caulk and anything else I can think of um, the kit itself is cheap it's like 10 bucks I think I mentioned that already it's not the best solution for a sink like this I don't think I think it's probably better suited to um, a single sink or one that doesn't have these two individual tubs here. Uh, it does work, but I think it's better suited to just, you know, just a single sink. Um, they do have other options available. I'll give you some links to those in the description as well that might be better suited for a sink like this. But again, it does work. It was cheap. The other options are more expensive. The sink is never going to fall again. I'm pretty confident of that. So yeah, uh, got some bonus footage replacing that strainer basket. Uh, it's leak free. I ran water through it for a good five, ten minutes or so. I don't see any drops forming anywhere. So we're all nice and dry there. Anyway, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe, stay safe, and 
Sorry for going way off topic. I did not plan on doing all this work, but that's just how these jobs go sometimes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.